What's going on guys? My name's Shed Dobra and I have a little bit of a black eye. Anyway, if you want to learn how to do that effect right there, stick around because you're in the right place. Run the intro, run the intro. All right, if you guys are new here, it's all just camera content, whether it be photo, video, or editing. So if you like that stuff, do give it a big old fat thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Anyway, today we're here to learn how to do this. Kind of funky little effect. So there's two ways that we can really achieve this. The first one is keyframing. Just like we can do almost anything ourselves in Final Cut, keyframing is very, very time consuming. And for myself with this one, I don't really think the juice is worth a squeeze. But the second option, and this is how I do it, is via an external plugin. The plugin that I use is by Pixel Film Studios, and it's called the Stabilizer 2.0. It's about 50 bucks American, so whatever that is in your local currency, I'm not sure, because I don't know where you're from. Anyway, you can always find a sale going on every couple of months or every couple of weeks, so maybe wait for the sale. I think I got mine for about 30 bucks American, so it's worth saving the 20 bucks. So I'm gonna keep this pretty short and pretty simple, show you how to use it, and then I'm gonna show you a few other applications of where I've used this stabilizing plugin. So an area that I like to use this quite a bit in my YouTube videos is in my intros, my outros, or if I'm just being a bit of an idiot, I like to use it there as well. So a few quick tips before we dive into Final Cut. We want to record this at the highest resolution we have available, 4K, 6K, if you've got a Canon R5, do it in 8K if you want, or if you've got the new Blackmagic, 12K. <laughs> bit over the top, but you know, it is what it is, because it's not what it isn't. <laughs> anyway, the reason we want to film at the highest resolution is we are going to need to crop down on our image to keep something locked in the center of the frame when it's moving side to side or up and down. So naturally, we're going to lose a bit of resolution. So to keep our final product at the best quality possible, we want to film in the highest resolution possible. The next tip is to have your shot a little bit wider than you think, because naturally it is going to crop down, it's really handy, to have a little bit of extra wiggle room on the sides so we don't have the black bars introduced or this mirroring effect, which we'll get into a little bit later. And the last final tip before we jump into Final Cut is film at a higher shutter speed. This is going to give you less motion blur, but a more clean, crisp image, which is gonna be really helpful while we're trying to track our subject with the auto tracker or the stabilizer 2.0. All right, let's jump into Final Cut. Whoa. All right, so when you buy this plugin, you actually get two different plugins. You get the stabilizer and you get the pro follow. We're gonna be using the stabilizer for this effect. You also get both versions in a 4K and a 1080p plugin. I filmed in 4K, so I'll be naturally using the 4K plugin. We're gonna grab our 4K stabilizer 2.0. We're gonna drag that and drop that on our clip. We're gonna take our playhead to the start of our clip, select our clip, and we're gonna go over here to our effects tab and choose the Pixel Film Studios Stabilizer 2.0. Now we're gonna hit the track editor. That's gonna bring up this pop-up. For some reason, my footage always looks different here, way oversaturated and just different. Don't worry about it, it doesn't affect your final image. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna drag out on this a little bit so we have a more of a larger view of our screen. I'm gonna drag this out over my whole face. Now lots of the time I'll try and find Somewhere where it's really contrasty, it might be white on black or something like that. Because I find the tracker really likes to lock onto those sort of hot spots, those contrasty areas. Much like an autofocus system. To make our track a little bit easier, we can hit this track assist filter. And this is basically going to invert our image and show us what the computer is actually working off. So now if I drag this amount all the way up and crank that, it's going to give the computer the best chance to get it right. So now we need to work out, are we going to track just the position, the scale, the rotation, or all three of them? I'm just going to be tracking the position. If I want to track the rotation, it's probably because I'm tracking a car that's going up and down bumps and I want to keep it level and have the ground kind of rotate under it. For now, let's keep it simple. Let's just go position. So now what we're going to do is just hit track and hit track forward. Now you'll notice this has 331 frames in this clip, so it's going to have to do every frame individually. I'm going to time lapse this until I have an issue and I'll show you how to fix it. All right, so it's failed. Let's see how we can fix this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit obviously continue through this. So as we go back, realistically, it's on my nose here, it's on the nose and this right here, that's where we miss it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to the last frame and that it was good. I'm going to give all these a quick keyframe. Then I'm gonna move to the next frame. I'm gonna drag this box back to where my nose is and 
you should see there that's pretty good and on the last one we've got those re-added keyframes which is going to do automatically and then we're going to hit track again now this seems to put us back on the right path now there we lost it again so now what we need to do let's go back through here and that's the last good keyframe now you see because it's all black there's not much white that's why it's having trouble tracking that so once again this is our last good frame and a slap on some of these keyframes going to go to the next frame and drag that back over to my nose and yeah i'm pretty happy with that it doesn't have to be perfect there we go i'm a little bit closer more in the light and it's liking that it's really locked onto that nose ring there and we've gone astray again i'm just really going to quickly do this and we'll meet up after this is all done and see how we went so now i'm just going to go ahead and click export data let the computer do its thing we'll see how we went now this is pretty graphics intensive, so depending on what your computer setup's like, you might want to render before you play back. Just make sure you turn the effect on and off right here. So let's have a quick watch. What's going on guys? My name's Jed Dobre and I have a little bit of a black eye. Anyway, if you want to learn how to do that effect right there, stick around because you're in the right place. Run the intro, run the intro. Now you can see that one's not too bad. You will be able to see over here we do have a mirror image and as I turn the guide on or off to so actually be able to see that this is where the image actually needs to shift over and as I play through the clip you basically see it's moving that image all over the place so what we're going to need to do is move the scale of our clip so as I increase that scale and I move our position around now we'll play it through again from the start and we'll see there we need to fix it up already at the start it needs to go up more so I'm gonna raise the scale again. Now you just basically wanna rinse and repeat this process until you have a nice image without any mirroring, because that makes it very obvious what you've done. Now, if you are outside and you've just got a blue sky above you, you might be fine with it going mirrored above that because you won't even be able to tell because it will just be blue into blue and you're Gucci. Now I've rendered that out, let's see how we've gone. What's going on guys? My name's Jed Dobre and I have a little bit of a black eye. Anyway, if you want to learn how to do that effect right there, stick around because you're in the right place. Run the intro, run the intro. Now there's just this one section here at four where we do have a bit of a mirror here. So what I'll do is make it, well, not quite that big. About there. So let's see how we've done with that modification. What's going on guys? My name's Jed Dobre and I have a little bit of a black eye. Anyway, if you want to learn how to do that effect right there, stick around because you're in the right place. Run the intro, run the intro. So after a bit of tweaking, we came out with a result I'm pretty happy with and I'll definitely use in one of my videos. Well, in fact, I used the other side of this video. Now, one thing that would really help to me with the intro is if I did film it at even higher shutter speed, it would have really helped lock onto that. And I had a little bit of motion blur going on and that's why the computer struggled at times. And it's not just tied to intros and outros and little gimmicky movements. It's actually really good for real world applications. I use it in client videos all the time. It just gives you dynamics to the shot and just makes give a little bit of a different look that you don't really notice at first, but when you take it off, you're like, oh my goodness, it looks so much better with it. So I'm gonna chuck up a few clips and point out the area that I've tracked onto it. And you can kind of see how it just gives a bit of a different look. <laughs> So yeah, this is a product I would recommend. If you have the money available, definitely go and pick it up and have a bit of fun with it. I'm not affiliated and I'm not sponsored by Pixel Film Studios, but if you guys do want to work with me, let me know. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for sticking around to the end, guys. I just hit 500 subscribers, unless someone's unsubscribed, so thank you all for that. I'm very appreciative. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click the button. Give it a big old fat thumbs up. It really helps me beat the algorithm. And go watch Norseman. Super sick show. I'm really enjoying season three, which fun fact actually is meant to be before season one and season two. So it is what it is. Thanks for sticking around to the end. My name's Jed Dobre. I'm very thankful for your time. Bye! Fun fact, I filmed this before I've actually filmed the middle bit of the video. Don't know why, did something different. Bye! <laughs>
camera temperature has risen. Stop shooting if you're in shoot mode. I can't wait for my Sony a7S3 to arrive. Bang!